Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on legal rights while employed in Canada. My name is Richika and I'm the project coordinator at Costi Immigrant Services and I will be your presenter. Thank you for taking the time out to be here with me today. In today's webinar, we will be looking at study and work permits, co-op or internship programs, the Employment Standards Act, work structure and compensation, overtime, new time, vacation, and statutory holidays, lunch, coffee, and rest breaks. Let's begin by looking at study and work permits. It is possible to work while you are here as a student under the Citizenship and Immigration Canada's work programs for students. You can work off campus, you can work on campus, and you can also work as a co-op or intern. You may work on campus at the institution where you study without a work permit if you are a full-time student at that institution. You must stop working on campus on the day you no longer meet the above eligibility requirements. That is, if you are no longer a full-time student. If you wish to participate in a co-op or internship program, you must apply for a work permit as well as a study permit. To be eligible for a work permit, you must meet the following requirements. You must have a valid study permit. Your intended employment must be an essential part of your program of study in Canada. Your employment must be a part of your academic, vocational, or professional training program offered by a designated learning institution, certified by a letter from a responsible academic official of the institution. Your co-op or internship employment cannot form more than 50% of the total program of study. You need a social insurance number from Service Canada to work in Canada. You must have one of the following conditions or remarks printed on your study permit in order to apply for SIN for on-campus work. May accept employment on the campus of the institution at which registered in full-time studies. May accept employment on or off campus if meeting eligibility criteria as per R 186F, V, or W. Must cease working if no longer meeting these criteria. If your study permit does not have one of the above conditions or remarks, you must submit a request for an amendment to your study permit before you can apply for a SIN. And there is no fee for this request. If your study permit has this, this permit does not permit the holder to engage in off-campus employment in Canada printed on it and you have changed your program of study, you must apply to change the conditions of your study permit and pay the applicable fees. You may work on campus at the institution where you study without a work permit if you have a valid study permit, be a full-time student at the public post-secondary institution such as a college or university, a private post-secondary institution that operates under the same rules and regulations as a public institution, a Canadian private institution authorized by provincial stature to confer degrees and you have a valid study permit, be enrolled at a designated learning institution at the post-secondary level, or enroll in a vocational program at the secondary level and be studying in an academic, vocational or professional training program that leads to a degree, diploma or certificate that is at least six months of duration in Canada. You may gain work experience by working on or off campus while completing your studies. You may qualify to work off campus without a work permit. If you qualify, your study permit will allow you to work up to 20 hours per week during a regular academic sessions 
and work full time during scheduled breaks such as the winter and the uh, summer break and the spring break. To qualify, you must have a valid study permit, be a full time student, be enrolled at a designated learning institution at the post secondary level, or in Quebec, a vocational program at the secondary level, and be studying in an academic, vocational, or professional training program that leads to a degree, diploma, or certificate that is at least six months in duration. You must stop working on the day you no longer meet the above eligibility requirements. That is, if you are no longer a full-time student during an academic session. Use the self-assessment tool to see if you're eligible to work off campus without a work permit. Moving on to co-op or internship programs. For some academic programs, work experience is a part of the curriculum. To participate in a co-op or internship program, you must meet the eligibility criteria. This means that as a foreign student wishing to apply to participate in a, a co-op or internship program, must apply for a work permit as well as a study permit as well as meet the following eligibility criteria. You must have a st valid study permit. Your intended employment must be an essential part of your program of study in Canada. Your employment must be a part of your academic, vocational or professional training program offered by a designated learning institution, certified by a letter from a responsible academic official of the institution, your co-op or internship employment cannot form more than 50% of the total program of study. You will not be eligible to work during your studies if you study French or English as a second language, or you participate in general interest or preparatory courses. There are three steps to apply for a work permit. Number one, you can apply online. To apply online, you must have access to a scanner or camera to create electronic copies of your documents for uploading and have a valid credit card for payment. Note, if you provide an email address on your application, please ensure you check it regularly for automated emails from IRCC regarding your cases. Some spam filters block these emails and clients are requested to ensure that emails from IRCC are not blocked. If you are unsure whether emails from IRCC are being sent, please check your IRCC online account. You can also apply on paper. Get the application pa package. This package includes the application guide and all the forms you need to fill out. You can download the application package. Read the guide carefully before you complete the application form. Photocopy the blank forms and use one of the work one as a working copy. Keep the working copy for your records. Next step, complete application and attach the necessary documents. The application form contains instructions. Read those instructions and be sure to provide the required documents. If information or documents are missing, your application may be delayed. This document checklist in the application kit will enumerate the documents that you need to include. Answer all questions carefully, completely, and truthfully. Answers can be typed or handwritten. Print clearly in black ink. Incomplete applications will not be processed. They will be returned to you, and this will delay the application process. There is no processing fee for this work permit. And lastly, submit your application. The Employment Standards Act, which is also called ESA in short. The Employment Standards Act defines the rights and responsibilities employees and employers have in Ontario. The ESA sets standards for minimum wages, for public holidays, for hours of work, for overtime pay, vacation time and general pay for statutory leaves and termination and severance entitlements. An employer who is covered by the ESA 
must have an employment standards poster published by the Ministry of Labor displayed somewhere in the workplace where employees are likely to see it. If the majority language in the workplace is something other than English, the ministry has published a version in that language, the employer must post the translated version next to the English version. If an employee requests a copy of the poster in a language other than English, and the ministry has published a version in that language, the employer must provide the translated version in addition to the English copy. English and French versions of this poster can be obtained at ontario.ca slash ESA poster and multilingual versions can be available at ontario.ca slash employment rights. Young workers have the same rights as other employees in Ontario. And they are covered under the ESA. So if they are working in retail, in restaurants and hotels, construction and farming, in domestic services, and they are working as assignment employees, which is through temporary agencies, they are all covered under ESA. However, certain types of employments are exempt from some parts of ESA. In particular, there are special rules and exemptions that apply to students. Work structure and compensation. There are several minimum wage rates in Ontario, including a general minimum wage rate that applies to most employees and a student minimum wage rate that applies to many students under the age of 18. We will address some of the major information regarding minimum wages while working as a student. A work week is a recurring period of seven consecutive days selected by the employer for the purpose of scheduling work. Or if the employer has not selected such a period, a recurring period of seven consecutive days beginning on Saturday and ending on sorry, beginning on Sunday and ending on Saturday. What are minimum wages? Minimum wage is the lowest hourly wage an employer can pay employees whether they are full-time or part-time. Employers must pay most employees, including young workers, at least the minimum wage, no matter how they are paid. They could be hourly, salary, commission, flat rate, or piece rate. Tips or gratuities are not considered as wages and not be considered in determining whether an employee is receiving at least the minimum wage. There are several minimum wage rates in Ontario, including a general minimum wage rate that applies to most employees and a student minimum wage rate. Students who are under the age of 18 who work no more than 28 hours in a week when school is in session or who work during a school holiday, for example, March break, Christmas break, summer holidays are paid the student minimum wages. Students who work more than 28 hours a week when school is in session are entitled to the general minimum wage. In the next slide, we will show you the minimum wage chart. This chart shows the minimum wage rates depending on a person's age and area of work. Note that all the student jobs are covered under ESA protection and not all student jobs are entitled to minimum wages. We will discuss this in the upcoming slide. Not all young workers are covered by minimum wage provisions in the ESA. There are exemptions to the minimum wage entitlements in the ESA that apply to students of any age. For example, students in training for certain occupations such as architecture, law, professional engineering, medicine, optometry, secondary school students performing work under a work experience program authorized by the school board that operates that student's school performing 
work under a program approved by a College of Applied Arts and Technology or university, and persons persons employed as a student to instruct or supervise children at a person employed as a student of a camp for children are not entitled to a minimum wage under the ESA. Moving on to overtime, blue time, vacation and statutory holidays. Overtime is at least one and a half times their regular pay rate of pay for each hour of work over 44 hours a week. So if you earn 11.75 an hour over time would be calculated as $11.75 plus $5.87, which makes it 17.62 per each hour over 44 hours per week. If an employee or employer agree in writing, the employee can take one and a half hours off paid time off work for each hour of overtime worked. Lieu time. The paid time off must be taken within three months of the work week in which the overtime was earned or the employee's written agreement within 12 months of that work week. An employee and an employer can agree in writing that an employee will receive paid time off work instead of overtime pay. This is sometimes called banked time or time off in lieu. If an employee has agreed to bank overtime hours, he or she must be given one and a half hours of paid time off work for each hour of overtime worked. Paid time off must be taken within three months of the week in which the overtime was earned or if the employee agrees in writing, it can be taken within 12 months. Vacation time and pay. Employees are entitled to two weeks of vacation time after each 12 month vacation entitlement year. Ordinarily, a vacation entitlement year is a recurring 12 month period beginning on the date of hire. Vacation pay must be at least 4% of gross wages, excluding any vacation pay earned in the 12 month vacation entitlement year or stub period. Gross wages are the total amount of employee is paid before any taxes, deductions, insurance premiums, or other withholdings. In fact, a person's take home pay may be significantly less than their gross wages. Statutory holidays. Most employees who qualify are entitled to take these days off work and be paid public holiday pay. Alternatively, the employee can agree in writing to work on a holiday and be paid public holiday pay plus premium pay for all the hours worked on the public holiday and not receive another day off, which is called a substitute holiday. Or he can be paid the regular wages for all hours worked on public holiday and receive another substitute holiday for which they must be paid public holiday pay. Some employees may be required to work on public holidays. While most employees are eligible for public holiday entitlement, some employees work in jobs that are not covered by the public holiday provisions of ESA. To determine whether a job is covered or if special rules apply, please look at the special rule tool. Some employees, some employers give their employees a holiday on Easter Sunday, Easter Monday or the first Monday in August or Remembrance Day. The employer is not required to do so under the Employment Standards Act. Qualifying for public holidays. Generally, employees qualify for public holidays entitlement unless they failed or fail without reasonable cause to work all of their last regularly scheduled day of work before the public holiday or all of their first regularly scheduled day of work after the public holiday. This rule is called first and last rule or they fail without reasonable cause to work their entire shift on the public holiday if they agreed to 
and were required to work that day. The last regularly scheduled day off work before the public holiday and the first regularly scheduled day off work after the public holiday do not have to be the days right before and the day right after the holiday. For example, an employee might not be scheduled to work the day right before or the day right after the holiday. As long as the employee works all of his or her shifts, last regularly scheduled shift before the holiday and all of the first one after it or has reasonable cause for not working either of those days, he or she meets the qualifying criteria. Lunch and coffee breaks. Most employees, including young workers, may not work longer than five hours in a row without getting a 30 minute eating period. If the employer and employee agree, the 30 minute eating period may be taken as two breaks within each five consecutive hour work period. Meal breaks are unpaid unless the employee's employment contract requires payment. Employers do not have to give employees coffee breaks or any other kind of break other than the eating period. Termination of employment. A number of expressions are commonly used to describe situations when employment is terminated. These include let go, discharged, dismissed, fired, and permanently laid off. Under the ESA, a person's employment is terminated if the employer dismisses or stops employing an employee, including whether an employee is no longer employed due to bankruptcy or insolvency of the employer. Constructively dismisses an employee and the employer resigns in response to, within a reasonable time, lays off an employee for a period that is no longer than a temporary layoff. In most cases, when an employer ends the employment of an employee who has been continuously employed for three months, the employer must provide the employee with a written notice of termination, termination pay, or a combination. As long as the notice and the number of weeks of termination pay together equal the length of the notice the employee is entitled to receive. The ESA does not require an employer to give an employee a reason why his or her employment has been terminated. There are, however, some situations when an employer cannot terminate an employee's employment, even if the employer is prepared to give proper written notice or termination pay. This webinar was brought to you by the International Student Connect Project. The Government of Ontario funds a bilingual project, the International Student Connect, to provide support to international students and their families. Costi Immigrant Services is a multicultural-based agency which serves over 39,000 clients annually from 14 sorry, 17 locations in the Greater Toronto Area. Costi coordinates this project across Ontario. The Transition Plan tool helps you track of the tasks and set schedules and deadlines. Using the ISC resources and checklists available on the ISC website, you can identify all the things you need to do and add them to your personalized plan. You may need to plan and set goals for a short-term stay or a full-term program, or even transition to permanent residency after graduation whether you need to arrange for a healthcare provider, get a social insurance number, apply for bursary, or make arrangements for summer housing, the transition plan can help you stay, stay on track. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at 1-844-871-4562. Or email us at isc at costi.org. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being with here with me today and uh, listening to this webinar.